No, I promise you, I never held an iPhone, let alone an iPhone 15 Pro until 2024, like two weeks ago. Now, I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro for about two weeks and boy, has it been a big ride. And before I share my experiences with this device, I would like to announce the winners from the previous giveaway from my previous video and they're gonna be displayed right here. I have replied to the comments of the winners and all you have to do is just contact me on my official Instagram page where I will instruct you on how you can win your gifts. Now today's video is not gonna be by any chance a review, I don't know how to review an iPhone, I've never had one and also this one came out like 8 months ago so probably everyone knows about it. But uh, yeah, I decided to try the phone and I was pleasantly surprised by some things and not so pleasantly surprised by others. Okay, but why did I decide to try the iPhone when the 15 came out? It's primarily because of this, the USB-C port. I really didn't like the Thunder whatever charger it had before and I was so used to my USB-C. Everything around here is USB-C so it just makes no sense for me to have a different type of charger and cable. And so that's why I primarily went with the iPhone 15 and I chose the Pro version because of the three lenses here and uh, I believe that the zoom lens adds a lot as, as well as the screen which is 120 hertz uh, this time and the regular iPhone 15 is like 60 hertz and that in 2024 is a complete downgrade from any phone. So what I'm trying to say is that there is a lot to love about this phone and there is also a lot to hate if you're coming from an Android like me. And um, I'm gonna start with the build quality of the device because that's how I usually make my videos. Now this is a titanium frame phone and I'm absolutely loving the design of it. I'm loving the overall aesthetic of the device even though it's a little bit on the smaller side and it screens around 6.1 inches. I still like it. I like the screen. I like the build quality overall. The camera lenses are very well positioned here, but we're going to talk about the screen later. For now, I'm going to focus on the build quality and uh, we're going to also be talking about the buttons and the layout here is something completely different from what I'm used to. For example, it would be always on the right side where I have my volume buttons and the power button, but right now the volume buttons are on the left side and there is also this action button, which surprisingly I really love because I can just hold it and it's gonna instantly go inside of my camera in video mode. Like this is one of the best features of iPhone that you can customize this action button. And a lot of people were complaining about where it's positioned. In my opinion, it's the perfect place. I mean, yeah, it could have been a little bit lower, but who cares really? You have a dedicated button that you can program to do whatever you want. I mean, that's awesome. Now, as much as I love the design here, I would never, and I mean never go outside with a phone that's above $500 in price and without a case. No, no, that's never gonna happen. I gotta slap a case on this bad boy here and then I'm good to go and possibly a screen protector as well. And same goes for its uh, IP68 water and dust resistance. I still wouldn't dip that thing in water, especially if it's around $900, I mean. Moving on to the display of the iPhone, I have a few things to say here. There are some things I like and some things that I dislike. Like for example, I've always been a fan of big screens. I've talked about it multiple times and this is only 6.1 inches, but it's made really well and it has a very good screen to body ratio. So I believe that because of that, uh, the device looks very premium and I really like this island here. Like many people do not like the island, but I really think that the island is something super cool. And for example, when I'm playing music on the phone or doing anything else, it's gonna display a little icon here. Like there is this attention to details in iOS that just lacks on Android and that's something that I love about it. But uh, moving on, the display is 120 Hz and it's a super retina display. I have no idea what that means compared to the HDR10 Plus display that uh, usually Android phones uh, offer. But in any case, the experience here is great and I've been watching some YouTube videos, Netflix and whatnot and I've had a great experience so far, so no complaints when it comes to that. And when it comes to the speakers of the device, there is a dual speaker here, one on the bottom and one in the earpiece. And uh, I guess that this is not a speaker down here, it's only on that side. So it is what it is, but here's a sample. But to be fair, the thing that I want to talk about the most would be the software of the iPhone 15 Pro and my transitioning from an Android to an iPhone, which wasn't smooth at all. Now there's a couple of things here that I want to talk about, both negative and positive about the iPhone, and we're gonna start about the switching process. So when I switched from an Android to an iPhone, 
Uh, everything seemed seamless in the beginning, but I will, that was very far from the truth. I actually had to make uh, an Apple ID account and I was struggling a lot with choosing the right password because it just wouldn't let me use the password that I want, no matter how much I followed the rules. And eventually when I was finally able to set it up, it uh, required me to enter it multiple other times when I was in apps like, for example, the App Store and I wanted to download an app. And it took forever until uh, everything was set up, including my face ID, because there is no fingerprint scanner on this iPhone. And uh, that's something that I was surprised that it's lacking. But yes, it doesn't have a fingerprint scanner. And so you are stuck with the face ID here. And that's a little bit of a minus in my opinion. But there's a few other things that were negatives in life, for example, that the iPhone restricts you and uh, you cannot really customize it so well. For example, you cannot customize it as well as you can customize Android with wallpapers, themes and stuff like that, which are usually pre-built in in uh, an, any Android phone or almost any Android phone. While in iOS, you have a few apps to choose from, from the App Store, but I haven't had the best experience when it comes to customization here. And I understand why iOS did that. It's probably to keep the phone running smoothly and just how they intended to. But this is far too limiting for me coming from an Android phone that I've been using for the past like 15 years or so. In any case, there are some things that I really love about the iPhones, like how everything is super smooth, every single animation, every single thing that I do on this phone has been well thought of and it has been a really smooth experience, no matter what I'm trying to do on the phone. I just had a little bit of an issue adjusting to how you go back and uh, out of an app or just uh, scrolling in between multiple apps. But after like a few days, you get completely used to it and it doesn't bother you anymore. At least it doesn't bother me so much. And the thing that bothers me actually the most is how restricting Apple is towards non-Apple devices. For example, I was trying to uh, move a couple of videos that I shot on the iPhone the other day and I realized that I can't. Because even with a USB cable, it wouldn't let me transfer files over 4 gigabytes in size. And if you're recording a lot of video, as I'm going to talk uh, later on, the files can become really big and unless you cut them in pieces, you're actually, it's actually impossible for you to transfer anything over USB if you don't have a Mac. And I don't have a Mac. So that's a really, really big problem. And uh, the only way that you can do it is either have super fast internet so you can just upload everything to Google Photos and then download them uh, somewhere else. Oh, and one last thing when it comes to the iOS software here. Now, if you are used to the Google ecosystem, like for example, Gmail, G Drive, Google Photos that I'm using on a daily basis, well, you're gonna have some issues using them on iPhone. It's not like they don't work, they do work. They're just that bit more limiting on iOS compared to Android for some reason. And it's probably made because Apple wants to make you switch to their own apps and their own ecosystem. And I, I understand that actually, but it's still annoying because I've been using Google Photos and uh, the Google keyboard, Gboard. I have been using that for quite a long time and I hate to see that it's kind of limited in iOS. Now, when it comes to performance, we have the A17 Pro chip stuffed inside of the iPhone 15 Pro and the Pro Max as well. And uh, in my opinion, it rivals one of the best CPUs like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 from Android and even surpasses it in some terms. And of course, since these are two completely different operating systems, it's kind of meaningless to run a benchmark score, but I did it anyway. And here it is. And uh, I also played some games on this phone. Like for example, you can run PS4 games on this device, which is truly awesome. But I've also tested uh, Genshin Impact, Wuthering Ways, PUBG and other games on this phone. And it, it held absolutely amazing when it comes to all of these games, so definitely no complaints when it comes to the chipset and the performance. Everything was super smooth, transitioning between apps and uh, all of that shenanigans. But tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Did you have any bad experiences about this phone or good experiences? I would really love to know. Now to the thing that I love most about this iPhone is probably its camera systems and boy do I love these cameras. Both when it comes to photos and videos, this iPhone 15 Pro just takes amazing shots 99% of the time and when it comes to videos then things get even better. I, I believe that this phone actually has the best video recording out of any phone out there right now and uh, I'm simply loving it. Not only can you record 4K, 30 and 60 FPS, you can also record lock, you can also record HDR ProRes or still use the ProRes with normal SDR footage which does not mess up your editing later if you try to do that. 
and I'm absolutely loving how many good things they've stuffed inside this camera system here. It's absolutely amazing and not only the primary lens but also the ultra wide camera and the zoom lens. The one thing that I love most about this phone is how smooth they have made the transition from the ultra wide to the main lens to the zoom lens. It's literally magic and I haven't seen that on any other Android phone, at least not the same smoothness and not the same transitions. And I believe that this is one of the main perks when it comes to iOS. They just have amazing optimizations for all of their apps. And even if you go on something like Instagram or WhatsApp and use the camera app there, the quality is going to be way better than, for example, on any Android phone. And just looking at this video while I'm recording it, I can see the consistency between the back and the front camera. This is 4K 60fps and you can see how, how crisp that quality is. Look at the skies, they're not overblown at all, which I mean, is something awesome. It's an amazing phone for vlogging. Just uh, don't hold it with your hand like me. Maybe use a stick or attach it to your bike. And in fact, I'm loving the camera so much that I've decided to switch to the iPhone permanently or at least until something better comes out, maybe the iPhone 16 or maybe some other Android phone that finally beats it. But for now, I can confidently say that you cannot beat the iPhone cameras when it comes to video. And as someone who loves making YouTube videos and other type of content, it's just a dream come true for me. And that's uh, the primary reason why I'll be switching to the iPhone, even though there's so many things I dislike about this device and there's so many things I dislike about iOS itself. And uh, I wish that Apple could have fixed them, but uh, they probably won't. And I totally understand them. They want you to use their own ecosystem, but I'm really excited about using this phone and see what its maximum capabilities are. And stay tuned because I have a lot more videos planned for you guys on this channel. Do let me know what you think about this. Do you agree with me on the things that I said about uh, the iPhone in this video? And uh, let me know your opinions down in the comment. If you like this video, hit that like button hit that subscribe button it will help me out tremendously in growing my channel and i'm so close to reaching 500 subscribers and later on even 1000 subscribers it's been my goal for like forever now so i will be really grateful if you do that if you'd like to watch some more videos of mine you can click right here and i'm so thankful to you for sticking until the end of this video have a wonderful day from me guys and a wonderful week and i'll talk to you in the next one bye bye